Do you know what this is? I'm going to give you a few seconds to look at it and come up with your best guess. This may be a little bit more familiar to you. The insulin pump has came a long way from that first picture I showed you, which is a prototype, which is a model, usually of a piece of equipment. That particular prototype for the insulin pump was designed in 1963 by Dr. Arnold Kadish. Diabetic research has shown that the more normal a blood glucose can remain, the less likely a patient is to have long-term complications. Those long-term complications can be very significant and very severe. So the insulin pump has done a great job of helping patients keep their blood glucose level normal. My name is Jan Moldham. I'm one of the assistant directors for competitive events for HOSA Future Health Professionals. It's my pleasure to talk with you for a few minutes about the history and future of medicine. The hope is by the end of this presentation, you'll understand a little bit more about the history of medicine, but you'll also be excited to explore the future of medicine. A lot of you have heard of Sir Alexander Fleming. Sir Alexander Fleming was a physician who worked in a laboratory. He was doing research on bacteria. Every year he went on an annual vacation and like any good scientist he cleaned his lab. He put his plates in a solution to clean them. When he returned from vacation he realized that one of the plates had not been covered with the solution and that mold had grown and where the mold had grown there was no bacteria. 1928 when Dr. Fleming made this discovery he didn't have any idea what he had. In fact, he put it to the side and penicillin did not become available until 1945. Prior to the development of antibiotics, of which penicillin was the first, 90% of those children who were diagnosed with bacterial meningitis died. Any kind of infection without antibiotics could run rampant in the body and cause death. It's interesting to me that one of the most important medical discoveries of all time probably came from a little sloppiness. If you're like me, when I think about somebody who's a medical inventor, I think of somebody working in a lab, day and night, really brilliant. That's not the way it is all the time. Not all discoveries or inventions are complicated. There was a nurse by the name of Vera Leonard who was working in a hospital in Greensboro, North Carolina. When she'd go home in the evening, she was really obsessed about what would happen if the hospital had to evacuate the newborn nursery. The newborn nursery was on the fifth floor. It did not have enough staff members to safely carry all the babies down those steps. So she developed the nanny apron. The nanny apron fit over the shoulders and had like little kangaroo pouches so that one staff member could put the baby safely in the pouches and then return the favor. And away they go, hands free, down the five flights of steps. Don't underestimate yourself. That's one of those invention she kind of hit yourself on the head and say why didn't I think of that all of us have something that we could offer to the world of medicine what's genetic design genetic design is basically altering and it's been done in a lot of different ways with plants and other things but the question now has become, as we've advanced, is it okay to genetically alter humans? How far should we go? In China, 
there is a physician who has just been sentenced to three years in prison. He genetically altered twins, stating that the reason for the alteration was to provide immunity to HIV. The government said that he had overstepped their ethical standards. All future medical inventions have to be looked at for ethical concerns. And all of us have probably a little different opinion on a lot of these things. The National Human Genome Research Institute provides a lot of good information. And if you're interested, I would encourage you to go ahead and check out that website. And once you've done that and learned a little more, you've started preparing for the 2021 biomedical debate topic, Designer Babies. Parents should be allowed to genetically design their offspring. You can find all of our guidelines at www.hosa.org under Competitive Events and Guidelines. If you don't know anything about our biomedical debate event, I'll tell you just briefly, you take a written test on the topic, so the more knowledge the better, and you qualify for a debate round. You draw either affirmative or negative, and I will tell you that most good debaters know both sides equally, and you will go through the debate process, and all of that's outlined in our guidelines. But just by doing that research that I talked about at the Human Genome Institute, you are ahead of the game in preparing for this event. So let's talk a little bit about what we have vaccines for. We have vaccines, and most of you have probably been vaccinated, for chickenpox, hepatitis, tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis, measles, mumps, rubella. There's a lot of vaccines available. We don't have a vaccine at the moment for COVID-19, and you know that that's something that is being worked on frantically right now. There is no vaccine for diabetes. There's no vaccine for cancer. There's no vaccine for HIV. Equipment. What are we going to need in the future? All of those work into a couple of events that we offer. One for middle school called Exploring Medical Innovations, where you look at something that's already been discovered, research that topic, and come up with a display. Again, the guidelines are available at hosa.org under competitive events. For secondary and post-secondary collegiate, medical innovation is where you actually come up with a prototype. Medical innovation and exploring medical innovation and biomedical debate are all team events. New guidelines are released in September. So keep looking for those. Any knowledge that you gain now is knowledge that you'll carry with you. So we encourage you to learn more about all of this. So research designers, babies. Write an essay supporting your decision regarding if it is acceptable or not. Design a prototype of your own medical innovation using household materials. If you have Legos, they're perfect. Include a write-up about the product for a sales pitch to Shark Tank. The future's yours. You will be, your generation will be the next great medical innovationist. Your generation will be the next inventors of medical science. The theme this year for HOSA is Unlock Your Potential. We encourage you to do that. And we've given you some examples of how you could proceed. The lesson that I just did meets standards, and these are aligned for you. They're also aligned at 
competitive events useful tools. We encourage you to get busy in preparing for the future of medicine, which is yours. Thank you.